Hello, hello, hello. In my lecture number 17 of 801, I have a basketball and I have a tennis ball on top of the basketball. And I drop them together. So I just take my hands off and they both fall. Of course, with the same acceleration. By the way, in that lecture 17, I'm wearing the same brooch, brooch that I'm wearing today. Now, you may notice in that lecture that as they bounce off the ground, that the basketball comes back approximately to the same height from where I dropped it. Let's call it a distance h above the floor. So the basketball, in case of an ideal, completely elastic collision, would come exactly back to the same height from where I dropped it. But you will see, in a very dramatic demonstration, that the tennis ball flies, flies way higher than h. Really way higher. And I want you to calculate how much higher. And I make ideal assumptions. Again, all collisions that occur are completely elastic. So first the tennis ball, sorry, first the basketball will hit the ground and will bounce up. And if it is completely elastic collision, it will bounce up with the same speed that it hits the floor. So that helps you already a little bit. Then, since the tennis ball, by the way, this is not a tennis ball, but this is the best I could find. This basketball is 35 years old. If I drop this one on the floor, it won't even bounce more than four inches. So the basketball comes back up then again from the floor. And you can think of it that it then collides with the tennis ball. So the tennis ball is then in this assumption coming down and the basketball is going up. And the basketball is much heavier than the tennis ball. And this will allow you then in this second collision between the basketball coming up and the tennis ball coming down to calculate how much higher the tennis ball will fly before it comes to a halt than the, the basketball. So we drop the whole system from the H, H as in heaven and I want to know how many times H in the ideal case will the basketball then fly until it comes to a halt. Is it 2 H? Is it maybe 3 H? Maybe 3 and a half H? What you may want to do at least to see the effect. Get your own basketball if you have a good one. Not like this. And put on top of it a tennis ball and do the experiment, do the demo. And you will see in any case that the tennis ball will fly way higher than the basketball. Though you will not find that exact number that I want you to calculate, because that's only a very ideal case that all collisions are elastic. And that, of course, is not the case. All right, let's try to be friends, have a nice day, and take care. <laughs> I just worked on the solution of the basketball and the tennis ball. And I worry that many of you are going to take things into account that I really didn't have in mind. In other words, I'm not interested in an accuracy even 5%, maybe not even 10%. So, you can simplify almost anything you want to. One thing is that the mass of the basketball is way larger than that of the tennis ball. 
There is another issue, of course. How do we define age? Well, age is measured from the center of the basketball when we drop it to the center of the basketball when it hits the ground. But then this, the basketball will squeeze a little, of course. All that, don't take that into account, you know. So you can say, well, it really falls over a distance which is maybe a little larger <laughs> than age. Don't get choked up with that. Drop that ball from four meters high and then you take for you age the distance over which the ball moves just four meters. Don't take age one meter. And then of course the issue is that the tennis ball, does the tennis ball also fall over a distance H? And the answer is, yes, assume that the tennis ball also falls over exactly that same distance H. So anything that has to do with squeezing the tennis ball or squeezing the basketball, forget that. They both fall over a distance H and then they bounce back up and the tennis ball has a mass which is way, way larger than that of the basketball. So don't get caught up in details. Look at this picture the way that a physicist would look at it when he does a back on the envelope calculation. No subtle details, not interested in 1% or 2% answer just to get a very cool idea of how, how high approximately that tennis ball would go. All right, I hope you will not be angry when you see my very simple solution. So I decided to make you see part of my lecture 17, during which I do that demonstration with the tennis ball and the basketball. You should be able to hear my voice, I hope, but also you can see the closed captions. You ready for this? There we go. Now I have something very special for you. Something really special. Something that has kept me awake. A lot of things keep me awake in physics. And not only in physics. Um, but, this, but this is very special. This is very special. I have here a basketball. Not completely elastic, but not bad. Tennis ball. Not completely elastic, but not bad. Now I'm going to drop them together, vertically down. And then this ball will bounce up somehow. So the question that I have for you is, do you think if I drop it from this height, that this tennis ball will sort of come up at most to this height? Or do you think it will be lower? Or do you think it will be higher? So use your intuition. In the worst case, it can be, can be wrong. He is already <laughs> pushing his finger off. So what do you think? Will the tennis ball reach about the same height? Who is in favor of that? Who is in favor of higher? Wow, who is in favor of a lot higher? Okay. Okay, I'll try it. Now, I cannot guarantee you that this ball will go straight up after the impact, because clearly that's impossible. That has zero chance, so it'd probably go off in some direction. But you will see the effect that I had in mind. So there we go. And you see that indeed, that tennis ball goes way higher. I'll try it once more to see whether I can get it go up a little bit more vertically, but that is very difficult. It goes way higher. And this is something that you should be able to calculate. And you can, and you will. Believe me, it's part of assignment number six. You haven't seen it yet. There we go. Oh boy, that was better. Well, any, do any one of you know approximately how much higher it goes if this ball has a way higher mass than this one? Of course, the mass ratio comes into it. 
Any idea? 